know, it's almost been an unfair advantage. I mean, all the things that, that uh, you know, the, the team has gone through. I mean, we don't care anymore. We don't care what people say. We don't care about uh, um, anything that comes up. We just know we're going to overcome it. I told him before the game, it's going to be about what we do. And when you look back at it, it's, it's kind of about what we did and what we didn't do. Um, not taking anything away from Michigan. They played a great game. They got a good team. They're very well coached. But, you know, we could have done things a little better as well. And that's on me, on the coaches. It's not anybody else. All right, everybody, put your feet up. We have all morning long to dive into all the things that, as Saban said, did and did not happen last night. And let's begin with that final play because it is in its own way a microcosm <laughs> of the night that we had. We happen to have one of the genuinely great offensive centers in the history of the NFL. They matter. And that's Jeff Saturday. Jeff, <laughs> why can't we get the ball snapped to the quarterback all night long and then on the play that decides the season? Yeah, it started early. Obviously, it was a bad snap early. I thought, actually, like that went to the guard. There was miscommunication. He has another bad snap. You just felt the pressure. And listen, the tighter you get down to the goal line, those pressure situations, you feel it. And I, I'm sure he felt that the ball is a little low. Milrow has to make a play on it again. I'm going to say this about the call. Whatever you think about the call, love it, hate it, follow your guard on that. You can't go inside. You have to follow your guard. If Here you we does, go. Could be different. Uh, okay, so before we get into the final play, Michigan completely outcoached Alabama, both For offensively sure. and defensively in this game. To the final play, I think it's a good play call. Yeah. I think that Jalen Milrow. Stop, let me stop you there. People are waking up this morning, they watch it last night, and they're hearing Dan Orlovsky say, snap the ball to the quarterback, have him run directly no, into the butt not. of his offensive lineman. How is it? Explain how it's All a right. good play call. So the play call, you motion in the back out. When that linebacker that we see kind of running comes from the back side, Jalen Milrow, I would have expected to throw that ball to the back, and it's basically a foot race to the pylon. That's essentially the goal. Michigan is blitzing everybody mm -hmm. like they did from literally the first play of the game throughout the whole football game. You guys are making the snap sound like the ball is rolled back. No. He catches it like mid-calf. I mean, if you he's want an him, if, unbelievable athlete. If you want him to be able to make that throw, the snap needs to be better. Right. A like, little bit able, better, yeah. To be able to read where the back, where the um, coverage is coming from and make the decision to throw the ball, I think that had something to do with decision because I had the same thought as you. Is when I see that linebacker running, I'm like, ooh, we got a Especially linebacker. from the back and running side. Back in and space. Man, right. It don't matter what side. To me, it's well, like, front I side. like this. No, I understand. Yeah. Front, it's better position, sure. but I'm thinking I got a one-on-one -on -one in this situation with a bunch of space. I like that, but he can't see. Taylor, jump in here with us here. The final play of the game. How did you see it? I thought it was a great job by Michigan calling zero in that situation. I have to disagree with Orlovsky here. I don't think it's a good call when you look back at uh, Alabama and how they've kind of handled themselves from a run aspect throughout the game. What it really was, what gave them the most success is the RPO type of situation. I think if you give Milrow the opportunity to look, see if a, a linebacker is going to break on the run or stay back, then you're able to throw that ball. If not, let him use his athleticism to buy some time. I think when you do a direct run and a, a power scheme like that, it almost turns into it's you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. But with the opportunity to have an RPO, you're now looking at to see where he's had those big runs, those almost X plays throughout the game that came at chunks at a time. Well, I mean, if you're that, first of all, that is an RPO that, that's yeah. called because he can run quarterback power essentially or kick the ball out essentially in one on one. If you're talking, you wanted an RPO that was maybe more to the perimeter and a flat route or something like that, I could see, but this is a pretty good call. If, if the snap is ideal, I would be surprised if Jalen doesn't throw that ball again to the back. If the snap is ideal, maybe it's just quarterback power and you follow the guard. My only I issue with all of this is. We're not giving credit to how Michigan collapses the line of scrimmage on the backside. Again, Michigan had one more than Alabama had. Burton going out is a big part of this. But Michigan blitzes right. again and collapses the offensive line. Watch the right side of the offensive line just get absolutely dump truck. I know Jeff keeps saying, like, follow the guard. I don't know if the perfect snap even allows him to follow the guard because he's still outnumbered. He's still outnumbered at that point, but then you're going up against a corner he or a safety right. rather right. than meeting some D tackles in line. Right. So in that situation, defenses are always going to call zero in that situation. When sure. it is high pressure moments like that, we want to be aggressive. And that's They're why I think aggressive. Burton being out matters. Yeah, and it does matter. he's now. their guy. Look, yeah. the story of the game in so many ways. We have two offensive linemen with us here today. The story of the game from the moment yes. it began, Alabama's offensive line 
line got dominated. Yes. I mean, thoroughly manhandled. Their inability to protect uh, uh, Jalen Milrow in the That's first nice. half of that game in particular, it was tough to watch. It didn't yeah. matter who you were rooting for. So I'll start with you, Jeff, and then to you, no, Taylor. No, How do we explain it? When, How, where was the answer? When Dan O keeps talking about getting, getting out coached, they had no plan for pressure. Yep. First play of the game, no plan for pressure. And you saw, and again, when you talk about moments building up, once a defense feels that you don't have the answer, they're going to keep bringing it until you show you can answer it. And Alabama had no answer in the first half. The second half answer is really let Milro go make a play. That, that, again, is not a true answer. And so when you saw Michigan get everybody open in the flats, when they're on offense all day long and, like, nobody went to coverage, where was Alabama's answer from an offensive perspective? They didn't have it. And, again, when you're putting all five of those guys, the offensive line from Alabama had these struggles all season. They're slow on the outside. Inside, they get they – get pushed back. They don't give Milrow a ton of space. This was not new. So for anybody who thinks, hey, Alabama dominated up front all season, they did not. Team showed this before. I thought they would have much better answers. Let me get Taylor in on this. What would you think, Taylor? Yeah, so I think when you look back at the coaching and getting ready for this game, incredible coordinated rushes with the inside twist and then having contained with the yep. defensive ends. They did a great job in that. Bringing the blitz is what is disappointing to me because Nick Saban is a legend. He is one of the greatest college football coaches of all time. When you're giving up five sacks in the first half, you need to get to the sideline, you need to start throwing chips and get your, your quarterback a little bit of confidence with some short intermediate throws. And I just felt like they waited to the second half to make those adjustments. When when the it's bleeding like that, they should have sat on the sideline and said, hey, we got to throw a tight end in here. We're going to keep the back end more often. Yeah. And I, it hurt them towards the end. Okay, let me say this too about, about quarterbacks is once teams know that their quarterback's going to drop his eyes because there is so much. This is no fault of any quarterback. Once you get hit, you're sacked five times. You tell me you ain't looking for it. Like everybody, but you start to hear footsteps, right? You start to feel pressure. You start to make poor decisions. That's what that's what happens for quarterbacks. And and and, and to Taylor's point, like. At some point, give him give him Max Pro, like help him out where he can stand in there, or just or, or go. Hey, we're going to go run the rock all the time. Refer to all of your expertise. The most effective offense Alabama had all night long was Jalen Milrow running with the ball, and it looked all night long like that was the last thing they wanted to do. They were yeah. trying to do Taylor everything they could to avoid that. I don't mean the defense. I mean right. their own offense mm -hmm. looked like they were trying to do everything they could to avoid what was overwhelmingly their most effective offensive play? Yeah, I think when it comes down, a lot of people like to talk about offensive coordinators and how egotistical they can be. If you have an efficient play in a run and you're trying to get the game going in the second half when Michigan's really ran the first half, you, you see the run, you see the athleticism, keep doing it. And obviously yeah. I'm excited about Michigan winning the game, but at the end of the day, we have to look at it with a critical eye. There were massive mistakes on both sides of the ball. If you're Alabama, you run it, you call the same play over and over again until they have to make an adjustment. Michigan, were, were, they're fighting a lot of problems early in the game. What they do? They stuck with the run. They allowed those safeties to start coming to fill in. Then they started moving their shots a little more downfield. They continually developed and played the game of chess over and over again. Michigan is not excused for the big mistakes they made when you, the first quarter you're sitting there and you're looking like, here we go again type of situation, but they were able to calm down. Nick Saban was very uncharacteristic of himself with not just seeing what's working, seeing what's not working, and then just beating what's working to death until they make an adjustment on defense. Yeah. Yeah, let me say this about Michigan, too. Let's not let's just not make it all about scheme. The scheme, definitely, they, they got coached. But man-to-man, -man, <laughs> Michigan knew they had an advantage on defensive line, and they exposed it time and time again. Like, you can call the greatest plays you want, but if you're getting blocked, getting pushed around, getting those things, it doesn't matter. To their point, Michigan, at the one-on-one -on -one impact plays and impact players, they made more plays. On the, on the second down in the overtime, when he slints, they're running like a zone concept on the backside, and they inside they knew the advantage was on Michigan and they played to that like it, it, I mean we can always talk about being out coached but at some point players got to play tip your cap to Michigan because them kids they freaking brought it and they made some big time plays at big moments and you got you got to tip your cap at some point I think it's very good and and in spite of everything that has been said Greeny uh they look like the best team in the country uh Georgia might have something to say but Georgia blew their opportunity to get into the playoffs and what, what I really think is interesting is, is what happens after next Monday night to Jim Harbaugh. As I was leaving LAX late last night, I took a look at the, the, the sports page of the LA Times. The lead columnist was begging, Greeny, he was begging Jim Harbaugh to take the Chargers job. 
So that, that's, that's, a, that's some place that uh, obviously uh, Harbaugh would probably be comfortable. We know some other places like the Bears. He is going to be in serious demand a week from today for the NFL and not one time uh, out in Pasadena did, did he ever put that to bed. He, he dodged it. He, he gave word salads. And then last night, he completely ignored it, the question by saying, I, I can't wait to get back to Ann Arbor. It's going to be a wondrous trip. Uh, so uh, fair uh, enough. It, it, he also has the NCAA around the corner, and that's really the issue. I mean, clearly. And look, I mean, no, no one avoids questions better than Jim Harbaugh does. He just pretends they weren't asked, which was hilarious <laughs> last night again. But, but I, the other piece of this I want to get to, look, you know that people have said, and candidly, I believe you are one of those people who has said if Michigan wins a championship this year, it will be tainted based upon all the things that have happened. He's one one away from doing it. Will it be tainted, Paul, if they win it? Greeny, I don't think so. And I know what I said, and I know what many of others have said. Attaboy. But when look you look at the current <laughs> state of, hey, <laughs> let me just in the first second, state of college football r right yeah. now, uh, it, is, it, it is such a mess, uh, and, and while a, a lot of us find what we believe the case to be here to be repugnant, uh, almost everything about college football right now is repugnant. So I, I think Michigan, if they win, they'll, ho they'll hoist the trophy. There'll be haters out there, but most people, I think, are going to go, congratulations, you were the best team. Taylor, that is a great deal of ink you have on your hand. I couldn't help notice that as you were there just a moment ago. But, <laughs> and, and it is intimidating even with you not being in the room. Uh, so I will ask this question advisedly. The people who will say, because there will be many of them if they win, who will say this championship is tainted based upon the sign-stealing scandal? What will your response be to them? I say, you know, people love to punch up. That's what I would say. When you look at, the, when, you look at when all these allegations came out, it was before Penn State, it was before Ohio State, it was before the Big Ten Championship, and it was before Alabama. If you are cheating and people say, hey, this guy might be cheating, you're not going to go, let's just keep cheating. Hopefully they won't find out. Those games, the ones, they would have won all those other games, no problem. All of them, no problem. So when you go to these big time games where, hey, Penn State's going to beat them in Penn State, mm -hmm. Ohio State's going to beat all, oh, they're, they're going to beat everybody. And then you go against Alabama, who everybody finding himself, which is why I was clapping, brother, because I love the fact, love the fact that you're, ta you're, you're taking a knee, laying down the sword, and you're understanding that there's, there's nothing here. Like, allegations are not, at the end of this, Michigan, if they win, they're the best team in college football, and they deserve to have the national championship. Now, they, they might be that either way. Let me get Graziano on here really quick uh, before I lose these guys. Because, Dan, uh, uh, Paul Feinbaum alluded to it a moment ago, the possibility of Harbaugh leaving. For yeah. those, I know a lot of people have been on vacations and things like that, haven't followed it. This is not just sort of blank speculation. He did something in the last week that would definitively point to him going to the NFL. We hired an agent, right? Don Yee, who represented Tom Brady, obviously a Michigan connection there. Uh, and so, obviously, that's another sort of log on the fire for those who want to speculate that maybe this is the year he jumps back to the NFL. Paul referenced the possibility of, you know, maybe there's something coming with the NCAA. That's obviously out there sort of in the ether. I don't, I can't really speak to that. But between the Chargers job opening, right, and the Raiders job opening, right, and, and then that possibility, those are two places where Harbaugh has been connected in the past. Right. Uh, and it may just sort of line up that this is, this is when he finally does go back. Because, I mean, people forget, he was a very successful NFL head coach. Look, there were a couple of dots to connect here, but Don Yee was Tom Brady's agent. Yes. Harbaugh Brady, very close, the Michigan thing. Brady now involved with the Raiders, so a lot of that would seem to make sense. Uh, Harbaugh has a lot of history with the San Diego Chargers, now the L.A. Chargers, so that would make sense. Taylor, uh, I'm going to lose you shortly. Do you believe... Whatever happens next Monday night, I, I just mean that because you have to go, and we thank you for your time today. Um, it, it, it came out funny. Um, do you believe, win, lose, or draw, that mo next Monday night will be Harbaugh's last game as the coach of Michigan? I, I think it's a strong possibility. I really do, and I, I think they're going to be in good hands. I believe Sharon Moore should be the next head coach of the University of Michigan. He's done a, a phenomenal job. But when you look at the allegations, if, he, if they believe that something's going to happen, he knows he's going to be wanted. He knows the Chargers and the Raiders and the Bears and everybody's going to want Jim Harbaugh. And he's going to have the opportunity to dip similar to the way that uh, Pete Carroll did. I don't want it to happen. I love the fact that this guy's not playing by anybody's, ru anybody's rules. I love the fact that he's sitting in a post-game press conference and saying it's an unfair advantage because of how, how close the team is. I think mm -hmm. that is just beautiful trolling. 
to the mainstream media, sports media, saying, we hear all the noise, we get it, we're going to keep doing us. But I think at the end of the day, this is a business, and we're going to end up in a situation where Harbaugh is in the NFL after uh, the season. And then, Paul, how about the other side? Nick Saban, legend, <laughs> tough night. Uh, there have been a lot of sort of ups and downs here. What do you see there? I, I, what, what, are, what are your expectations for him and that program now coming off what was a very painful loss? Really, it's complicated because there were a lot of people who felt that if Saban put another title down, that would be his eighth, seventh at Alabama, then that would be the ultimate time to walk away. Uh, last night changes that, perhaps. But no one can really get inside of Nick Saban's head. But, I mean, there, there are a lot of signs all year long that pointed toward it. And even, even last night, he talked about how special this team was, how uh, it, it really was probably the most special experience that he's ever had. Because I think we all saw last night, this team had so many flaws. And in Saban's mind, to get there. But it's hard to imagine Nick Saban walking away after losing a game to Jim Harbaugh in Michigan in the semifinals. Nick Saban should keep coaching. There is no taint if Michigan, Michigan wins the national championship. Taylor, can you ask Will Compton for us to confirm which teams Roman Wilson and Blake Corum would be on and get back to us, please? <laughs> Thank you. I, I will absolutely do that, brother. No question.